Hello and welcome to Peace Hospitals podcast. Today we are about to embark on a journey through the dizzying depths of vertigo. Joining us today, Dr. M. Sandhya, consultant adult and pediatric neurologist, having wide expertise in treating and managing vertigo. In today's episode, she would like to unravel the complexities of this intriguing phenomenon and uncover its effects on our perception and daily lives. Dr. Sandhya, thank you for joining us at Pace Hospital's High Tech City. Thank you for inviting me today. I would like to navigate through the dizzying array of causes, treatments and coping strategies, offering insights that shed light on this dizzying phenomena. Dr. Sandhya, thank you for joining us. Let's understand exactly what is vertigo and dizziness. As we know, in our lifetime, someone might be affected with dizziness or vertigo. So, let's know knowledge about vertigo or dizziness. Now, coming to what is vertigo. Vertigo is a sense of false motion, self-motion, even though there is no self-motion. That is vertigo. It is closely resembled to dizziness also, where the person doesn't have any self-motion, but they will have some spatial disorientation. So, a person with vertigo can also have dizziness initially and then later on vertigo. Dizziness is a feeling of disturbed spatial orientation, but there is no self-motion. So, these are closely related terms in a patient with vestibular symptoms. What are the types and causes of vertigo? There are two types of vertigo, central vertigo and peripheral vertigo. Central vertigo means central causes of the brain. That is, there are certain structures in the brain which can produce vertigo. They are the brain stem, cerebellum. And sometimes large space occupying lesion can also produce central vertigo. And sometimes certain patients with vestibular migraine is also a central cause of vertigo. Now coming to the peripheral vertigo, the word peripheral itself indicates that whenever any peripheral structures of the brain, that is which is important to balance control, that is the ear, ear related structure, it can be labyrinthitis or it can be vestibular neuritis or it can be related to the uh, bony canal, semicircular canal, that is benign precisional vertigo, all can produce peripheral vertigo. There are certain other causes of vertigo related to the neck that is we commonly see that is cervicogenic vertigo or cervicogenic dizziness. There are variety of other causes that also can produce peripheral vertigo. What are the symptoms of vestibular vertigo? We see in the patient with vertigo, they can have vertigo, they can have dizziness or they can have certain visual symptoms such as visual illusions that they can see the images are tilted, some images are far when they turn to the head. And sometimes they may also have postural symptoms, that is whenever they get up from the sitting position or whenever they get up from the lying position, they stand, they feel a reeling sensation, that are the postural symptoms. So, the patient can have vertigo, dizziness and postural symptoms and they will feel that someone is pulling them to one side, that is called pulsion, directional pulsion. So, these are the symptoms. Some patients can have history of ear block, that is tinnitus, ringing in the ear or they can feel ear fullness or they can have ear pain or they can have deafness. These are the other symptoms associated with vertigo. Sometimes they can also have headache also. What are the complications of vertigo? If the person has suddenly vertigo, what will happen if it is not controlled? Person will fall and then they will have head injury. Suddenly they will fall in the bathroom, they will fall in the uh, roadside or while driving vertigo. They cannot see, they will feel a, a sense of false motion. So they can lead to accidents. So these are the complications of the vertigo. So doctor, can you tell me about the risk factors of vertigo? So, usually we have, uh, the studies have found that people with middle age, that is between 50 to 70 years can have vertigo, they are higher risk for vertigo and especially the females are also having higher risk group for vertigo and especially this all people will have most more of a peripheral vertigo but ladies will have other than peripheral, that is central causes of vertigo. What are the diagnostic tests for vertigo? 
फर्स्ट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इज देर आर टेस्ट टू नो द एक्चुअल इटियोलॉजी ऑफ द वर्टाइगो सो वेदर इट इज सेंट्रल एंड पेरिफल सो फर्स्ट पर्सन शुड बी इवेल्युएटेड इन डिटेल इट इंक्लूड बोथ क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन एंड सर्टेन टेस्ट सो युअर डॉक्टर विल एक्सामिन यू फॉर द टेस्ट सो क्लिनिकल टेस्ट बेड साइड दे विल डू दैट इज हेड इम्पल्स टेस्ट your doctor will suddenly turn your head to either side right side and left side and then they will see the eye movement some nystagmus some jerky movements will be seen in the eyes and they will pick up whether it is ear related to vertigo or it is due to central vertigo sometimes a person the eye will be directed to the one side that is skew deviation we tell in scientific terms that indicates that central cause of vertigo so head impulse test your doctor will do and in cases of what we most commonly see is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo that is due to the autolith in the semicircular canal that can also produce vertigo so you adopt in the clinical in the opd side they will do one maneuver that is called dix halpack maneuver what happen in dix halpack maneuver suddenly he do, does person is made to sit and then made to lie and in the head down position at the 20 degree both right side and left side at a 45 degree and at that position the person will have severe vertigo so this is another method to confirm benign paroxysmal positional vertigo then other test sometime your may doctor may ask for ent evaluation taro to see any ear related cause is there any ear block is there any deafness is there so in that part of the workup is the pure tone audiometry at the test other test if the doctor feels that there is central cause of vertigo then mri brain is needed what are the treatment options for vertigo so treatment of the vertigo depends upon the etiology of treatment most common we see benign paroxysmal positional vertigo that is semi circular canal involvement so in that if the patient person the clinician decides that it is confirmed ppv is confirmed by dix halpack maneuver that the bedside itself the doctor will do one maneuver it is called epilis maneuver this maneuver can be done by both neurologist or neuro otologist or even ent surgeon who are specialized in dealing with vertigo will do this maneuver and immediately the vertigo will be corrected at that instant itself for older people they may require three or four times this epilis maneuver has to be done and then this is the management for benign paroxysmal positional vertigo but we should know there are very various other causes of vertigo for example in patient with migraine migraine is a condition vestibular migraine the person will have migraine with vertigo so we need to treat that and sometimes most common we see in older people they will have orthostatic intolerance their vertigo or dizziness the reason is because of low bp whenever they are standing at that time bp is down and they feel dizzy or vertigo so you need to consult the cardiologist at that time and your blood pressure medicine to be adjusted in commonly in females we see young females anemia is a cause of dizziness so we need to correct so treatment depends upon the etiology of the vertigo how to prevent the vertigo prevention of vertigo it depends upon the again etiology for example a person is having vestibular migraine we need to avoid the migraine triggers there are various migraine triggers like sunlight exposure certain foods or um, uh, sound phonophobia photophobia all that has to be avoided it change from person to person that is migraine triggers should be avoided and for that purpose they should have definite prophylactic medicine medicine should be given in case of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo the person should continue the exercises rehabilitation exercise which your doctor will tell you the name of that exercise is branded there of vestibular rehabilitation exercise so person need to continue to strengthen the vestibular apparatus that is the one method and second anti vertigo drugs will also help and in certain cases your doctor may ask you to the fasting lipid profiles if the cholesterol is high there is high chance of producing autolith formation and benign paroxysmal positional vertigo and the other cause if the if the person has acute onset of vertigo for example in a scenario of a older male 50 or 60 years sudden onset of acute vertigo and with blurring of vision diplopia or any weakness first possibility we need to consider is brain stem stroke so stroke has to be managed according to whether it is decreased blood supply or it is the blood like that it will go and there are other causes of vertigo triggers we should avoid that is in case of 
semicircular canal dehiscence. That is the one entity where a person will have trigger of head, uh, vertigo after a loud sound. So we need to avoid loud, loud sound such cases. So that are the certain triggers which we need to prevent. And if the, for example, young female recurrent dizziness they are getting and they are not drinking water, hypotension is also cause of dizziness. So dehydration, we need to advise them dehydration and we commonly seen is cervicogenic dizziness in older age group they will come with history of neck pain and then they will complete vertigo if we miss that neck pain we are not able to control the vertigo so neck treatment muscle relaxant calcium related drugs and in such case we need to do mra cervical spine sometimes last triggers are the psychogenic even psychogenic anxiety stress also can provoke vertigo or dizziness in certain cases so they need behavior therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, reassurance. So doctor, is vertigo dangerous? See vertigo, it depends upon the etiology. For example, it is a green skin, it is a dangerous condition because it can take the life. Dangerous in other scenario, if the patient is on the way and sudden vertigo is falling, he is having a head injury, it is a patient can have traumatic brain injury, subdural hematoma, then it becomes dangerous. As such, it is not a dangerous condition. In certain scenario, it is dangerous. Is vertigo hereditary? See, vertigo usually it is not considered as hereditary, but the vertigo can be the associated symptom of certain hereditary syndromes like vestibular migraine. Migraine is a genetic disorder. So that then we can tell it is a hereditary. But, and there are certain episodic ataxia. They are all hereditary syndrome where episodic ataxia, the person will have suddenly vertigo, uh, imbalance and then fall. It is a genetic condition. Is vertigo curable? Yes, vertigo is mostly it is curable condition depending upon the etiology. How long does vertigo last? See, vertigo, it depends upon the type of the vertigo. For example, the list of the duration of vertigo is, we term in scientific is vestibular paroxysmia. Vestibular paroxysmia is a condition where in the brain, one artery is there, around that artery, the uh, artery will rotate around the vestibular nerve. That is vestibular paroxysmia. There, the person will have multiple episodes of vertigo, but it will last for seconds. Usually, seen in females. So that is exclusion of all other causes of vertigo, shortest occurring. And in benign paroxysmal vertigo, the duration of vertigo is only one minute. So duration of vertigo will help a neurologist or a clinician to diagnose the type of vertigo. In case of vestibular migraine, it will last for five minutes to even 72 hours. Vestibular migraine, vertigo can occur from five minutes to 72 hours. And in case of menial disease, Menial disease, what happened? The patient will have sudden tinnitus of the ear and then they will also feel fullness of the ear and after the attack, they will have hearing loss. In such cases, the vertigo will last 20 minutes to 12 hours. Then one entity is there, psychogenic vertigo. In that, such people, they will have chronic vertigo, long standing. It can last for weeks or months. And in case of central vertigo, that is secondary to the brainstem causes, that is stroke, cerebellar stroke, even they will have long-standing vertigo, like it can last three months. Can stress cause vertigo? Yes, stress, anxiety, even depression can cause vertigo. Can high blood pressure cause vertigo? Yes, high blood pressure can also cause vertigo because it can produce stroke. Even the blood pressure, even high and low blood pressure, both can produce vertigo. High blood pressure, in terms of uh, increased perfusion or they can produce stroke or brainstem bleed, they can produce vertigo. And in patients with low BP, even can produce vertigo and dizziness, especially on standing. So, such cases, patients will clearly tell that they feel dizzy and vertigo when they are standing. But they won't have any dizziness and vertigo when they are lying. Can dehydration cause vertigo? Yes, dehydration can also cause vertigo because how dehydration will cause hypotension, decrease intake of the fluids in the body, hypotension, so decrease blood supply to the brain and patient will have dizziness. They will have more of a dizziness. That is spatial disorientation feeling they will have rather than clear cut vertigo, self motion. Can migraines cause vertigo? Migraine can cause vertigo. That is vestibular migraine, a form of migraine. It is called migraine with vertigo can cause vertigo. Can thyroid cause vertigo? Thyroid can cause vertigo. Both 
hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism can produce so what i go how is that hypothyroidism means there is low thyroid level so whenever there is low thyroid air your heartbeat will be reduced so person will have bradycardia so decrease blood supply decrease heart rate then patient can have dizziness hyperthyroidism means increased heart rate palpitation and again person can have dizziness what are the triggers of vertigo the triggers of the vertigo that is in patients with vestibular migraine migraine triggers will produce vertigo in case of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo that is turning of the head sudden turning of the head rotation of the head on the either side rolling in the bed suddenly looking down suddenly looking up can produce vertigo and in case of loud sound in certain condition like semi circular canal dehiscence loud sound can produce vertigo and in case of orthostatic intolerance that is dizziness due to orthostatic bp is down at that time person when they are standing they will have dizziness so that are the triggers of vertigo can vertigo go away on its own usually vertigo has doesn't go away by its own it needs treatment either epilepsy manual depending upon the cause or vestibular migraine that patient should should be on continuous prophylactic medicines but in certain scenario like that benign paroxysmal positional vertigo where the horizontal semicircular canal is affected the person can have short lasting vertigo and it is self remitting it is the only one condition where it will go by itself how to cure cervical vertigo cervical vertigo means the vertigo secondary to cervical spondylosis what happen in cervical spondylosis there is muscle spasm prolapsed disc so muscle tightness will be there that itself will produce dizziness and vertigo so such cases we need to give the patient short course of um, analgesic muscle relaxant neurologic drug and in addition to that cervical strengthening exercise should be advised and we need to also check in such cases whether the vertebral artery is affected or not because the one artery is there we supply the brain which go through the neck region so for that doppler nephrosis has to be done thank you dr sandhya for sharing crucial information regarding the vertigo to our listeners i hope this information can be valuable for the listeners that understanding this condition empowers us to conquer its challenges and embrace a balanced life if any of you have any further questions regarding vertigo please don't hesitate to consult a neurologist and remember as we explore the depths of vertigo may you find balance and clarity in both your inner and outer worlds we will be back soon with another episode on pace hospitals podcast until next time take care and stay grounded thank you